flash memory has uh, grown like a weed in the last uh, decade or so. So what I want to do in this video is look at uh, some of the milestone which uh, drove this uh, tremendous uh, growth uh, in the field of flash memory and uh, also describe to you what is the current uh, state of the art, where do uh, things uh, stand as of uh, October of uh, 2012 in the world of flash memory. So some of the early products that you might uh, recall uh, which used uh, flash memory were these uh, uh, these uh, cards which were used uh, primarily in, uh, in uh, digital cameras. So digital cameras were really starting to take off around uh, 2000, uh, 2002. I remember owning my uh, first one around this time. And uh, the other thing which was uh, using flash at that time were these, uh, these uh, USB drives which people were using to uh, store their files and uh, conveniently uh, carry um, uh, with them and what they uh, they were you know around the capacity of anywhere between uh, 256 MB to all the way up to uh, 1 gigabyte and what they used to consist was uh, if you open one of these uh, early ones up what they used to consist of was this uh, flash memory chip and this uh, controller for uh, controlling this uh, flash memory. So there were not only a couple of uh, chips which were used to be inside these uh, these uh, drives. So the first uh, major product, uh, consumer product, uh, which uh, drove this usage of uh, flash memory was uh, this uh, iPod uh, Nano, uh, which, uh, which was the first, uh, you remember iPod were introduced uh, way earlier, but they were based on these hard disk drives. The first iPod that uh, used the flash disk drive was this iPod uh, Nano and uh, it used to uh, come with this uh, four gigabyte uh, of uh, flash storage and uh, one way to position this uh, four gigabyte uh, is that it's enough memory to hold a thousand uh, songs if you uh, if you look up the size of one of your mp3 songs it's uh, it's you know between four to five mb so thousands of that is uh, is, uh, is is four gigabyte and then uh, the second product which really really drove uh, again the demand in uh, flash memory was uh, iPhone and then other 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 uh, smartphones uh, and the first iPhone uh, it came with the minimum memory size of uh, 8 gigabyte and then the other product which really drove this was these um, uh, these uh, MacBook Air which was uh, launched uh, around uh, 2008 and uh, more recently Intel has been pushing these uh, Ultrabooks which also use uh, flash memory as their primary storage. And this uh, Ultrabook uh, or these uh, MacBook Air, uh, it used to have uh, 64 gigabyte of the solid state uh, drive. So that's, you know, you can see that from that iPod 4 gigabyte to iPhone 8 gigabyte to this uh, MacBook Air and uh, Ultrabooks using uh, 64 gigabyte of these uh, solid state uh, drives. And then the world changed again in uh, in 2010, and there was uh, this another product which was the iPad, and this again uh, used uh, the NAND flash uh, as its uh, primary uh, storage, or that's the only option you have for uh, uh, storing data and apps and musics in your iPad. And uh, again, it used to come in these various capacity, but again a lot of uh, gigabytes uh, of uh, flash memory for uh, storing your data and uh, that that led to uh, clearly you know explosion uh, in the market uh, for uh, flash memory so this flash memory can be divided into two the nor and the nand so primary most of this growth came in this uh, nand flash which is uh, what is used in uh, all these tablets and uh, smartphones and uh, clearly this plot shows again how this uh, market uh, for uh, NAND flash memory has grown reaching uh, north of around uh, 20 uh, billion dollars uh, in uh, 2012. In one of the earlier videos uh, in the teardowns of our iPhone we saw this, uh, this uh, flash uh, memory chip 
and uh, it could uh, range anywhere from uh, 16 gigabyte and uh, all the way up to 64 uh, gigabyte uh, of uh, storage in your uh, iPad and it's a single chip which uh, contains uh, this much uh, storage but uh, if you open apart uh, that uh, chip as I uh, described to you in one of the earlier video it's uh, not uh, one single die but it's a multiple of these uh, dies uh, stacked on uh, top of each other in this case it's uh, it's uh, 16 of uh, these uh, or actually uh, 32 of these uh, dies uh, stacked uh, on uh, top of uh, each other so uh, the one of uh, the growth in the capacity that is available uh, per uh, chip so the the amount of uh, storage that is available in um, in uh, in the flash memory chip has uh, far outpaced the growth you see in the number of uh, transistors uh, in a microprocessor so remember moore's law uh, what uh, moore's law said uh, is that uh, you see a doubling of your uh, capacity in uh, every 18 months or every uh, 1.5 uh, years but if you look uh, in the world of uh, flash because of this uh, tremendous uh, growth uh, in uh, demand the number of uh, number of uh, bits or the capacity available uh, per chip has doubled uh, every year so all the way starting uh, from uh, 2001 to all the way uh, in uh, 2009 or 2010 currently you can buy up to uh, 64 uh, gigabyte uh, of uh, flash storage in one single uh, chip and this is also known as uh, Huang's law uh, named after uh, Mr. Huang who was the president uh, of uh, uh, Samsung uh, microelectronics division of uh, Samsung he also used to be a research associate uh, at uh, Stanford uh, back uh, in the 80s and he he gave this prediction that the uh, amount of uh, storage available in a uh, flash memory chip will uh, double uh, every year and that has a uh, hold true for uh, larger parts uh, of uh, the last uh, decade and uh, more recently Samsung uh, announced this uh, chip which has uh, shipping in 2012 which has 120 gigabyte of uh, storage available in uh, one single chip so remember this chip is not uh, one single die it has uh, multiple of these uh, dies uh, stacked on uh, top of each other and each of these dies has been uh, becoming uh, smaller and larger in uh, capacity so shown her uh, the comparative size of these uh, die currently uh, the minimum feature size uh, on uh, these dies is is, uh, is between uh, 19 to 20 nanometers and uh, the maximum uh, capacity in each of uh, these uh, dies is uh, uh, is between uh, 8 uh, gigabytes to uh, 16 uh, gigabyte which uh, translates uh, into 100 so 16 gigabyte is uh, is 128 uh, uh, gigabits remember it's uh, many times people uh, report uh, these numbers in either uh, gigabyte and sometimes people report when they talk about dies they report these capacity in uh, gigabits uh, so byte always has this uh, bigger uh, b and uh, bit has this uh, smaller b so that's uh, that's uh, if you uh, see those uh, uh, numbers uh, you can identify them whether it's a capital b or a small b so intel micron uh, flash technology uh, also known as imft they announced uh, their uh, chip uh, in uh, later part of 2011 and it's 120 gigabit of capacity or 16 gigabyte of capacity in uh, one of these uh, chips so that is you know a tremendous uh, capacity available on uh, one single die and also you know you can stack uh, 16 of these uh, together and you can get you know um, 128 um, a lot of storage in one single uh, chip and you can see the feature size over here so you know this is uh, 20 nanometer so flash memory has uh, by far become you know the 
foremost uh, driver of uh, lithography uh, technology so if this compares you know the minimum uh, feature size available in uh, different uh, types uh, of uh, devices uh, logic uh, dram and nand and you can clearly see that the minimum feature size available in 2012 you can buy a chip which has a 20 nanometer feature size for its uh, cell and uh, that's you know in, as compared to logic uh, if you see intel's 22 nanometer iv bridge that has a minimum gate length of uh, 30 nanometer so by far uh, uh, nand flash memory has become the 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 foremost driver of uh, lithography and a lot of uh, it comes from this uh, tremendous demand in the post pc era a lot of it also comes from the fact that it's uh, the flash memory in the nand flash memory especially it's a very regular layout so it's easier uh, to uh, apply things like double patterning or quadruple patterning uh, to uh, flash memory. So flash memory was in fact the first to adopt uh, double uh, patterning technology and uh, in fact uh, this year we are seeing uh, products uh, which are using uh, quadruple uh, patterning technology already in, uh, in uh, flash memory. So the volume of NAND flash memory uh, in use or being produced uh, has been uh, growing up uh, very rapidly and that might uh, uh, you know naturally uh, lend you to believe that the company which uh, make uh, NAND flash memory must be laughing their way to the bank but uh, apparently it's uh, not the case and uh, so let's let's start a look investigate uh, why uh, why is uh, nand flash not as uh, profitable for the companies which uh, make them so the first thing we look at is is the nand flash uh, memory price so nand flash uh, memory it uh, it you know it becomes uh, cheaper 50% every year so if you brought a uh, flash memory uh, in uh, 2010 it uh, used to cost uh, roughly uh, two dollar uh, per uh, gigabyte in uh, 2011 it was uh, one dollar a gigabyte and uh, you know it's approaching between uh, 70 to uh, 50 cents a gigabyte uh, currently and it uh, you know it uh, it uh, it uh, took over the dram uh, price uh, back in uh, 2003 and uh, if you look now dram is at least uh, you know five to uh, ten times uh, more expensive as uh, compared to nine uh, so the NAND flash uh, memory, if you look in, in 2011, it uh, cost, you know, around uh, somewhere near around a uh, dollar uh, per uh, gigabyte. And it, uh, it, it still continues to remain, uh, you know, t 20 times more expensive uh, as uh, or 10 times at least more expensive than a hard disk drive. Because hard disk drive also, it uh, keeps on uh, falling at a very rapid uh, rate. So even though the capacity is uh, going up, the price for uh, NAND flash uh, memory is uh, uh, keeps on uh, going down. So not only is the price of flash memory decreasing by 50% every year, but it varies quite a lot. Uh, uh, in a given month or even day to day. So all these numbers that I just showed you are all taken from these uh, website uh, called uh, DRAM exchange and it uh, lists out the price, uh, current selling price of uh, of uh, of uh, memory card using flash or uh, spot selling price of uh, flash and as you can see you know even within a day the price can uh, vary uh, quite a bit and uh, as as you can see the name of this website is DRAM exchange and whenever you hear things about like exchange it reminds us of uh, you know commodities commodities are traded uh, in uh, exchange and believe it or not but flash is essentially despite all the technological advancement happening uh, in the field it is a commodity you know think about it when we buy uh, when we buy uh, uh, flash memory or we buy an ipod all we care about is you know whether it's uh, 32 gigabyte or whether it's 64 gigabyte we don't care about whether uh, samsung made it or uh, toshiba made it or micron made it so it makes very difficult for uh, if you 
you're in a commodity market to make uh, any uh, any money and uh, this uh, table over here it uh, lists out the top players uh, in the field of uh, NAND flash memory and uh, the biggest uh, 600 uh, pound gorilla in the field of memory both uh, in uh, NAND and DRAM is, uh, is Samsung it uh, consistently has been owning around 40% uh, of the market share the number two player is uh, Toshiba which owns uh, uh, does all its manufacturing uh, in uh, Japan and owns 35% uh, of the market share and as we'll discuss later they were in fact the first to invent uh, flash uh, memory and uh, the rest of the players are Micron, Hynix or now it's called SK Hynix and Intel and together they own the rest of the 25% of the market share and you know despite uh, these uh, flash memory growing uh, by uh, such a uh, huge amount in the post PC era this is a quote from E times and it says you know the only profitable vendor supplier of flash memory in the year 2009 was uh, Samsung and so you know it's it's a it's a combination of uh, these things it's a uh, falling price but more importantly uh, it's falling price it's the fact that uh, memory is a commodity business and the fact uh, that uh, there are uh, so many uh, competitor and primarily you know uh, competitors uh, having competitors is is good uh, for the end customer uh, but it's never good uh, for uh, for the companies uh, which are uh, competing with each other and that uh, I find these uh, this quote by um, um, uh, Genghis Khan uh, to be very appropriate uh, over here and 